Good morning, afternoon or evening, depending on what time of day you're watching this, or indeed wherever else in the world you are. I'm Mod, I've got a friend with me today. Hello! It's me, is that you gonna s <laughs> I was going to say, is he going to say anything else there? <laughs> I, I, I changed the intro up a little bit, I'm so sorry, so sorry. But today, I'm going to be playing, and DF is going to be watching via the wonders of a Skype screen share phone call, Endless Space. It's a game by Amplified Studios. Let's We've looked at the options real quickly, we're going to go to a new game. And I'm not very good at uh, 4X games. This is what a this is basically. What does 4X even stand for, DF? Uh, quite frankly, um, I've been playing mostly fantasy 4X games, but uh, it basically means you have turn-based, uh, quite um, intense strategy games. You need to focus a lot on uh, both diplomatic choices and economy and. Etc. Etc. It's just basically an RTS, but it's more. You have the option to, well, well, it's a little bit different. <laughs> if that even, if that even makes sense. I'm no expert. <laughs> hey, you're more of an expert than me. I do, all I tend to do is I go. Well, in this instance, you can see the Cravers. They are the combat specialists in the game. All they care about is getting things and destroying them and turning them into fresh produce for their armies. And I, that's the sort of play style I prefer, just getting big, powerful things, smashing everything else in front of me, going for a conquest victory. However, in this game, conquest I found very fucking hard. Because you have to balance that with research to get all the decent ships. You can have great big fleets with the Cravers, but you can't have... You know, we'll just, let's just open up this panel. Normally in most MMO, not MMOs, but... <laughs> oh god. Mostly in 4X games, you get about 4 or 5 races, and this one, there's 10 that we can see here. That's quite impressive already. Hmm. Uh, the United Empire, you general humans, and in this game, the United Empire are bad guys. The Pilgrims are sort of chaotic neutral when it comes to humanity, when it comes to the game. The Sheridan are a elite unit of the United Empire. Automatons are robots. Amoeba, well, enough said there. Hisho are... Each race has its own little traits here on the right-hand side of the screen. For example, Eternal War, what's that do if I hover over it? Can't be at peace with other factions. Who's that? The Cravers. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> because all they want to do is consume everything. Yep. If anybody's ever played Warhammer 40,000, think of them as Tyranids but with mechanised weaponry. There you go, here's the United Empire. They're dust impaired, meaning they have they struggle to get... I don't know. Increases dust cost of abilities used to... So I thought it meant it was harder for them to get currency, and in this game, Currency is something called dust, and we go from planet to planet, finding dust, turning it into products. Safens, I think they are AI of some sort. Not entirely sure. They could be just armored suits for all I know, but they're very shiny, sleek. They've got. They're all about science and traveling about, but they're not very good at fighting. Not very good at all. Unskilled builders as well. Oh, okay. So they can't build. Hisso, they are very good at combat by the look of it. What's their negative? Space cadets. Space cadets is. Um, less research. Mm. That's what the blue symbol there means. Amoeba, they are... They could do trading. They're very good at trading by the look of it. And they've got no negative effects there. No. But, but look at their fleet. That's very odd. It's like a monster. <laughs> I suppose you could do, uh, technically call these the Tyranids then. Except they don't consume anything. These just look like purely... Bio, bio, uh, they look like pure organic beings. Yeah. Like Automatons, as I said, are the robots. They're alright. They're all about the diplomacy and everything and research, but they're not very good at combat. Oh. Kind of balancing out these races, it seems. They've done a really good job of balancing it, and if I was to activate the DLC, I think you get another two or three races on top of this. The Cravers, as I mentioned before, they're all about research well, these can get they get for lots of knowledge i thought they were crap at research i was wrong they're all about the combat yeah they can, they can build ships cheaply and quickly and they can fill the planets up and the more people you have on the planets the more research more science the more dust you're gathering and the, or everything else like that horatio is a basically a clone race this one guy called horatio went off to a faraway planet took a cloning machine with him before i am so fucking perfect i'm going to make more of me ah oh. Yes, there we go. Once the planet was repopulated, Horatio the first only had to look up, regard the stars, and realise how much more beautiful they too could would be if they were filled with Horatios. Cloning would yeah. be quite useful, actually. 
<laughs> Actually, what is that? They've got a massive plus three to cloning. What's cloning do? Um, they get a food bonus. Food is what allows you to grow your populations on your planets. Having a big population is what lets you get you more research, the bigger ship building. I, th I think that means you re use resources quicker if you're not careful. What's the downside? The price of beauty. It costs them 20% more to build ships, which actually isn't that bad. And you, what, which out of the races we've seen so far, which one are you swinging towards the most? Um, currently, I'm just gonna say that we should stick to Cravers now because you're quite used to it. Maybe you should try something different this time. I have used Cravers. I have used Automatons, and Automatons are slow at combat, but they love making peace of people. Who have we got here? The Sowers. They are a machine race created by the virtual faction of the Endless. The Endless are basically... Think Star Wars a long, long time ago. All those people died off and everything. I know it's a really crude layman's way of putting it, but imagine it's Star Wars. Everybody's dead, and all these races here, they are the guys who have come along afterwards and found... They found all the Atats and the, all the other stuff that the Empire left behind. I think that's the best way of describing the Endless. Nice. Obviously, there's a bit more to the Endless than that, but that's pretty much what they are. Um, they took from their creators the mission to traverse the universe and make worlds livable and habitable for the arrival or return of the Endless. So they basically industrial guys by the look of yeah. it. Space cadets a means bit they bad get less. research as well, it seems. Mm -hmm. They can colonize any planet, though, which is crazy good. They can build anything, by the look of it. Slow travellers, uh, minus one movement on ship speed. That's not a problem. The pilgrims, they're the other human race. Diplomatic alignment, good. And they're... What, what are they good at? They're good. They seem to be good at... Plus 10% damage max per number of allies on fleet weapons. Mm -hmm. This is quite intense. Um, uh, it's... Um, um, what? what I, I'm missing the war right now. It's quite... Um... In depth. in depth? Yeah. Quite in depth, yes. Oh, I like that ship there, actually. That reminds me of a, of a ship from EVE Online called the Nightmare. I love the Nightmare. It's my favourite ship ever. And if anybody ever wants to see me play EVE Online, by the way, let me know. And I'll, constru I'll consider playing that again. I haven't played that for about a year or two now. But moving swiftly on to the last race, the Sheridan. They are the... They're, they're basically a, an elite unit from the United Empire and... They don't get much money, but they are very good at combat. Yeah. Oh, they've got extra health but for their ships. Quite a bit. They're quite... Um, one, one kind of race I enjoy is with plenty of money, you know? <laughs> but it depends totally on uh, what they favour in... Um, what resources are available in this game, by the way. You can create it. Basically, when you get to the end game, all planets are pretty much equal. You can terraform anything, and you can t make them do anything you want. It's just mostly what you want. What? Well, let's just pick a race and get ourselves thrown in there, and we'll just talk it as we're getting. It looks quite in depth, yes, but a lot of it you pick up quite quickly. That's probably a strong point of the game. It's easy to pick up, but it's like most of these games, it's actually quite hard to master. So, you wanted money, didn't you? I think it's the siphons. Scientists, they get lots of research. They get crazy good research. Oh, why not? <laughs> Fast travelers make science. Doesn't say anything about money. I saw money on the Sheridan. Hisho, they are evil. Ooh, gameplay conquest or glory. Kind of like the sniper things though. <laughs> Snipers, plus fifteen percent accuracy on fleet weapons. Oh, we have to show you combat at some point as well. Combat is great fun. Think of it as um, a card game. And that's all I can say for now. Paper, rock, scissors in the form of a card game. Death before dishonor. That is 40% XP bonus for each battle on the hero. Uh, that's all right if you use your heroes. Heroes are fun. They're basically commanders that join units and give them a little bit of a boost. Masters of destruction. Deadly weapons. Ooh, ooh, they do great DPS damage by the look of it. I like that. Snipers we already established is good. So they hit, and when they do hit, they hit hard. Revenge, they... When they lose a the system, they get extra bonuses to attack that system for 20 turns. Hugen's Ring, ooh, money. So these guys get a lot of money. Uh, isotope Fabrication is... Some sort of research. Yep. So, uh, shall we go for the Hisso? Let's go with Hisso. 
they have the money and the trade uh, and the research which you like and they have the combat specialty that I like and what was their downside again? Space Cadets. Space Cadets which is minus 20% research. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. I could live with that. Yeah. Right. Difficulty. I struggle with this game quite badly. I always struggle with 4X games. I'm a proper newbie. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're sticking it. Seriously, it's really hard this game. Yeah. Oh. It's mostly, mostly because I don't play 4X games that much. I should do. But I love 4X games. Single player mode, uh, random faction, random faction. Let's change the colour of that one. Can we change your colour? Can we change your colour? No. I don't think you can do much about AI. I want to change your colours. I want you to be red or something. I can change my colour. Let us be red then. <laughs> you want us to be red? Oh, let me see if I can change to green and. Oh, there you go, yellow. So then we go. You want us to be red, do you? Weirdo. Well, there we go. <laughs> what? It's going to start no, off with the Mark, intro. Mark. What's it? What? We'll stick with pink. <laughs> no, just because just because he said that now. Actually, where's dark green? We'll get rid of dark green. <laughs> nah. Just because he said that, I'm sticking with blue. Yeah. I don't like you anymore. It's fine. <laughs> and it's going to be a little... You're an arsehole. <laughs> I've got to call you Watson. <laughs> There's a little intro sequence now introducing us to ritual, the he show called noble tradition. What we call brutal, they call just. Is this coming through okay for you? Yeah, I'm just waiting for the cutscene to finish. I'm potentially yeah. for any viewers. I like that they've put such a lot of effort into the backstories for each of these races. I mean, not just the, the bits at the bottom, but the, look at the artwork as well. Looking good. Ooh. Very successful crusade. Ooh, badass. <laughs> space samurai. <laughs> That's pretty much what they are, space samurai. So this is a Hiso ship. We've got two ships in our fleet. We've got various things we can do on the right hand side. This icon here shows us how many ships we can actually, how, how many ships we have with the number two there, meaning two. That's a planet. We zoom out and in in the normal way. Pretty. I icons with stars on. That's basically uncharted stuff with possibly shiny things on. Is it right click or mouse click or left click? Left click. Left click shows us the map. That's our universe we have to explore, and we are where well, we there. So it's it's a it's a medium sized map if I remember rightly. We've got all that to play on. Looking good. The music is very atmospheric as well. It's a typical sci fi passive noise. Good background noise. Very atmospheric. I have to get that confirmed when the video is released. Yeah, sadly the downside with the Skype call is you DF can't hear this right now. So he's got nothing but my word for it. It's quite good. Yeah, we have uh he the usual bars on top, and that uh, we have the usual bars on the top. But this is basically our player score. Although apparently someone before we've even started, someone else, someone's already on thirty-seven and twenty-nine. We're on thirty. I don't get that myself. Uh, the next one is the that's our trade. I think no, it's managing our empire. We bring that up. It brings up our planets, things we can change on it, how much research we get. The yellow icon is dust, which also is at the top of the screen there. Let's close you. Research window. It gives you quite a complex research tree, actually. Oof. <laughs> See, this is kind of my kind of game, actually. <laughs> well, let's just zoom in a bit and show you what you can actually... Oh, no, 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 no. I forgot it's left click to drag around. I'm so used to some games being right click. There we go. That is your warfare technology tree. Research tech... Yeah. Applied Sciences, which is your research and science related ones. Bottom one is Navigation, Explosion and Expansion, which is also, I'm assuming, Trade. And that one is... Oh, that's your Diplomacy and Trade. So anything blue, we have. Anything yellow, we can have. Oh. So I'm thinking, in a, in to what, what do we use to do? If we hover the mouse over them... If we hover the mouse over them... There we go. I just have to hover over the circle bit, not the name bit. That gives us hardened framing and stealth construction. That's for ship armor, ba armoring basically. That allows us to 
get torpedoes and armor plating again. Isolation shields, that gives us something else. You get the general idea here, yeah? Yes, I do. So oh, I'm just going to quickly look at all these one by one. Colonize Arid, that would be a useful one, I think. Cenobotany, that is colonized Tundra. That one and then that one. Is it shift click or control click? Shift click. You can do one, then the other. Green means it's in your research queue. So if we just get all of the yellow ones to begin with, that'll do us to get started. Yeah. And that little number underneath there tells us how long it'll take us to actually research these items. This is our ship window where we can research ships, develop them. Let's have a look at what's a nest ship. I think that's a. You know, like colony pods yeah. or settler wagons? I think that's basically Idiot. what a nest ship They're is. They're meant to colonize new planets. Yes, that's the one. Kind of, oh, there you kind go. of similar to... Um, um, damn it, what is the call again? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll remember it soon, though. Alpha Centauri? Yeah, no, 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 not Alpha Centauri, actually. Um, yeah... Galactic uh, oh. Civilizations. Ah, that that's uh, available in Steam now, isn't it? For what is it, seventy-five pounds? I think. Yeah, that basically means that you're going to get a star named after yourself, and you get every every upcoming release as well. Yeah. Anyway, back to this window, though. This is a basic warrior class ship. We can change the engine, armor, bullets, battery power, armor. But we could modify that by going to the modification screen and changing setups here. And we got um, this is our, our tonnage, how much weight the ship can actually physically carry. And we change pieces here, or add pieces, and then max out our ship to its appropriate tonnage. We'll, we'll stick with the default ships for now. The next window along is diplomacy. We've we haven't got any contact with anybody. If I click on it, it should bring up. Yeah, there we go. Nice holographic display. This is us. And then if we meet other people, they'll appear on these pedestals, and we can see our relationship between us and them, or them and someone else, and them and someone else. The diplomacy in this game is fantastic, actually. And what's that one? Academy. That's where you hire your heroes. We've got heroes here we can hire, and you have to stick them into a fleet, and have fun that way. These here on the right-hand side are events. We haven't got enough dust to hire any of them, you know so they're out at the moment. Who is this? Who, who made this game? Amplified Studios. They're also responsible for Dungeon of the Endless, and I think they're making Endless Legends at the moment. Because this kind of is similar to a um, fantasy strategy game that I might be looking to pick up. Yeah, I'm the fantasy as well, so... <laughs> You're a big fan of fantasy, aren't you? Yeah. Anyway, here we have, if we click on the planet, we can now bring up our planet management screen. Ooh. It's very, It's very nice, actually. <laughs> so we can... What can we actually build here? There's nothing here to... We click on the planet itself, we go to the building screen, we can... What should we build? We can do, do extra science things, we could do extra money things, extra industry things, which gets us more resources for building, or more food things so we can actually make the planet bigger. Is there... And I... Go on, sorry. Is there a building for production increase? That would be this one. Yeah, that would be quite useful in the beginning, I think. Unless you have any I... other ideas. <laughs> No, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm very fine with that. That one we can col we can't colonize any of these yet. We need to learn the various skill tree items, I suppose. Let's come out of that. Oh wait, wait. Before we could leave that one, let's bring that one back up. You got all your that's up here. You got your various stats for how much. You click on that. Basically, bring up not the planet, but the entire star system. These are all the planets in the star system. Showing you each type, and then you're at the top here, you've got the resources for each planet you can actually raid it for. None of them have got food at the moment because they're not colonized, but the, this one is probably going to be a good one for getting industry. These two are good for research. This one in particular is very good for research, 20 compared to 12. So we want to be colonizing this one and leave this one till last if possible because it's not as good as these two. But I think we need to still research how to actually co colonize them in the first place. This is the total amount of resources coming in for this system across all four planets. Population, whether the people actually like you, if there's a hero in the system, etc, etc. Yep, looking good. So, so let's zoom in a bit more. We can, we can click on one ship or the other. You've got various icons here. 
that is the nest ship and that is scout we want to send scout off in uh, that way direction I think scout scout there we go off he goes Whee! and he's only got so far because his engines are actually quite rubbish and now the nest ship we shall we can either click I don't think we can click on the ship I think we have to click on this little tag icon here and we want that to go here no nope. there we go He's off, to red, he's off to the nearby Red Dwarf, and we get there, well, it's... Next turn! I don't think there's much else to show you, really, on this turn. <laughs> We're researching, we have had a look at the screen building, ship's building screen. This button here has now popped up, which means complete all the moves by our ships, or move them as far as possible. There you go, we've uncovered a new planet, and this scout is still going on towards the star. Were you about to say something then, sir? No, oh, I'm actually quite just being impressed by this, actually. So, uh -huh. in the comments, write if you want to see me and Mud do a game together, maybe one day. <laughs> I don't think they need to even do that. I think we're just going to have to do a multiplayer series of this at some point anyway. I've never done 4X multiplayer. In fact, I'd love to do some. I'd love to. Bring him just back now to the overview of the map. The stars, I think the planets with stars over the top of them means something shiny is at this particular star, which is most of them. We are in orbit around an undiscovered planet. You notice the blue ring around this planet? Yes. That means that's our zone of influence. That's our political control area. Uh, I'm familiar it, with this. Yeah, it becomes relevant later on in the game. In this early part, it doesn't matter. When we conquer this planet, which we do by clicking on colonize. Actually, first of all, I have to tell you, is it even possible to colonize this planet? You see on the name of the tree, on the name of the tree, on the name of the system, you've got circles. Little dots. Yep. Like you've got four in Aquarius and in case Kais, Kais, we'll call it Kais. We've got two here. The red ones, we can't colonise. Blue one means we have colonised it. Grey one means there is a planet here to colonise. If there's reds there, we can't colonise the planet. See here, we can't colonise this one, but we can select this one. Yep. And there's no zone of influence. We have to wait for 20 turns, I think it is, before it becomes our planet properly. And... Where do we actually find out the details? I think for that one, that is on the Empire tab. No, I'm wrong. Where is it? I know the info is here somewhere. But it will... Population... Maybe we find out next. Outpost 30 turns. An outpost is set up in this system requiring some time to, compo to become a colony. That's a colony. That's just an outpost. Yeah. It's going to take a while. Uh, <laughs> yes. He's still on the move. Are you still building your thing? Yes, you've got two turns left to go. And you? We need to do something with you. Exploitation. We need a... You said we wanted... Oh, survey requires technology adaptive colonies. Cause this planet has got a moon around it. And moons sometimes have hidden artifacts on them. Extra resources we can gather. Maybe somewhere decent we could put a research post. You want to just get industrial stuff to the beginning, in the beginning of the game. So we'll get for one of them. It's always useful. Depending though. Yes. Um... I'm kind of thinking about Galactic Sim now. Uh, there you kind of, if you have good amount of uh, resource potentialities, you'll, I mean, you focus on one planet for maybe food production or gold production, and then you focus on another one for military production. So you're pumping out new uh, aircrafts constantly because you have such a high production value. Ah, okay. I'm thinking of production. See these little white icons on the top here? Mm. These are resources that the planet has, and you can access them with the right research. Like, for example, this concrete artifacts, we can get it. We can get these with uh, personal shielding, which if we want to research that, it's just a case of going into the tree and finding it and then clicking it, and then the tree also automatically self set itself up for researching that particular thing. This one is ionic crystals. That's very handy. If we have a monopoly of all the ionic, all the planets that have ionic crystals, we get a plus sixty percent ship movement. And considering our ships, I think our downside was our ships move slower, wasn't yes. it? Yes. So we want that ideally, but we get plus ten approval on the planet, plus two dust per person, and plus one research if we have ionic crystals. 
On the right here, now we've got extra icons. This is events. Great things have small beginnings. That's a plot-based event, I think. That one is a discovery of a wonder, tunnel to slip gates, which I'm guessing is from this one here. And that one is exploration event. We have found case. As familiarity with space travel and exploration increases, more and more events and anomalies are registered. Some of these are blah 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 blah. Affects 40 plus 40% 40 food on this system for the next five turns. This planet is now going to. So this system is going to grow quite quickly for the next five turns. Uh, great things are small beginnings. Haggard, unsure, but full of hope. The first colonists have set foot on another planet. That's all that is. That's just telling us you set first on the planet that wasn't your home one. Well done. And this one is a. We've discovered a wonder. What does that let us do? Allowing rapid transport throughout the system. Okay. Anything else you'd like us to do before we go for the next turn? Oh, looking good. Okay. Turn two. I think the most highest I got this to about is uh, 120... Uh, 100? No, 200 and something. Ooh, that's a long game. <laughs> that is a long game. Right, I think that means ev all those coloured icons means everyone's finished taking their turns. Oh, look at our score relative to everybody else's. I've been starting good. Yeah, we've overtaken the AI. We want to finish off our scouts movement to go to this Hamal. Ooh. Right, what's this? A research. Alternate armors has been researched. And the next one is arid epigenics. Epigenetics, sorry. Let's go. That, I can't remember what that does, but this one allows us better armors, which we can dis which we can improve our ships with, and that one is the planet discovery. One technology is randomly discovered, so that'll be that'll be the adaptive armors that we just had. Our ship here is in Hamal orbit. We can't colonize anything on that planet, as you see there. This one has got void stones, plus plus twenty percent healing if we have the monopoly on that one. I'm not overly fussed about that. So, which direction should we head in? Uh, thinking about the star uh, right above. This one? Yeah. Unless you have a better idea. Maybe you want to no, spread out. No, I'm fine I don't think we'll get there until next turn. I think the next turn, nothing else to do. So, once you actually get into it, once you've actually got the hang of what you're getting on with and got to grips with what's going on, it moves really quickly. We'll finish off the movement of that one. And what's this all about? Completed constructions. Ah, Aquarius. We, if we click on Aquarius, we'll go straight to the planet. And you see our queue. This is our production queue here. It's empty. This window here is ships we've produced. Or this one here is buildings we've, in, we've, base, we've, we've produced. Mm. And we've now got a list of things here we can actually build. Stealth construction. Plus 25% defense if we go for it. Or this one is hardened framing. If we wanted to. We could go into the Empire Management screen and set our Aquarius AI to automatically build food-based things, re industrial dust, research, military, diplomacy, approval, and balanced. Are you using that usually? I do use that sometimes, actually, yeah. Usually when it comes to end game, I just want to quickly do everything for research. Give me lots of research, or quick give me lots of money, because there's the best ship type in the game, Titans. I love Titans. Not Titans. Are they Titans? I think the Dreadnoughts. Yes, it's Dreadnoughts. You get your usual frigates, cruisers, battleships, and then Dreadnoughts are massive. They take a lot of time and effort. They take up a lot of space in your fleet, but God, are they worth it. And we'll, we'll, we'll quit out of this screen. We'll You're above Leo Orbit. Oh, there's one. Because there's something we've researched. You see now one of the red dots and Hamau has now gone grey. Yep. It means if we send a, a nest ship there, we can actually colonise it. And on that note, I think that's what we're going to do with Aquarius. We're going exactly. to use... about to say we should make a new colony ship. <laughs> Ooh, but fourteen. We cannot afford to buy that. It's seven hundred and eighty-two. Our total is thirty-one. Oh, we need plenty of it more gold. I think that's well. I'm not sure if we can even build a gold building. You know, right in the front of. <laughs> I don't think we could buy anything. That is telling us yes, we completed the research. Now it's you know botany next. That is, we discovered a planet, plus 20 research. Completed construction, so that's that one. We could dismiss that now. How much is our income? Income per turn is 10. Ooh. See how it says there, 31 in brackets, plus 10? Is there any also, uh, way to increase that tax rate? While you do that, I will... The tax rate, yes, that is this bar here. We can pump it up if we want, or we can ring it all the way down. Maybe. We've only got two planets. Yeah. What are you thinking? Um, maybe go up to 50. 
Of course, they get more unhappy. Oh, yeah. You've instantly pissed everybody off, mate. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but it does push us up to 13 income per turn. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave up. that for a bit. We'll leave it that for now, yeah. Next turn. We'll keep on going for another 15 minutes or so, and then we'll think, I think we'll knock this on the head. Yep. Just so you know, you can get an idea of how quickly we can actually get going. He's moving over to there. I don't think there's anything else we can do. You see that smiley face on the Empire? I don't know if it comes through clearly on Skype, but that's a grey smiley face with uh, neither a happy or a frown on I it. Can see it. That, mean, that means the people are uh, meh. Yeah. They're meh. Kind of like that. How are we looking at Yeah. Empire score, but there's no point really looking at that just yet, but we're doing okay. Diplomacy, I don't think anybody's seen anybody else we're yet. We're playing with the morale of the people. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get a hero yet? Yes, no. I don't think we can oh, we afford can, actually. can we? Well, they cost two dust per turn to keep, but if I click on one... Um, inspect. I hate that... This is one thing I would change. It's too many clicks to look at a hero. Like, this one is good on defending a system by the look of it. Fleet defense, star system. Yeah, this one's good at produ things being done in a system. Usually, by the look of it, um, growth of a system. This one is an exploration type. Lots of damage. Interception evasion. Oh. And this one is a damage based hero. It's more like a brute force. Yep. Um, I would say maybe wait, but depends on you how you prefer these games because I would probably try and Grab as much cash as you can, but did we start up a new product in the capital or main uh, planet? We did indeed. We started the uh, nest ship. If I click on that, it's got 12 turns left on it, and we need 619 before we can buy it, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, while we're here, let's go to Case now. One of the pallets, planets is now colonizable. To do that, all we do is. Um, can we do that? No. Nope. How do we do that then? I forget how to transfer population from one planet to the other. But what what you do is one person one person you drag from there and drop on there. I think. Oh, we need to colonize it first, right? That's what I've done wrong. Duh. That's completely what we need to do. You go into the planet and then colonize it, right? Silly mod is silly. And then then one person from there goes onto that one. But that will give us. A bit of industrial and not much, not much. But it's something that's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And that should hopefully give us a lot more than it doing nothing. And research, okay, that's okay. This guy is still moving up to here, so we'll end the turn. Any questions at this point, by the way? Uh, no, it's no, I'm fine, actually. I'm quite enjoying it, actually. It's looking good, mod. Started to believe your words from uh, yesterday. <laughs> when have I let you down? <laughs> apart, from, apart from a set of Corsa. Uh, yeah, but I was never considering it actually. <laughs> That's a shame because I thought that the game looked quite good. There's a few Formula One cars in that game now. Let's move you. Get rid of you. No, one thing, You've one thing in that game though, it should have said specifically and for people with wheel. Yeah. Let's go up this time. One thing I need to do at some point is make better engines so our ships can actually travel further. Oh, oh, that went wrong. Nearly. There we go, we've got a new planet. We can colonize this one. Uh, a new advanced defense ship is created on Cetus. We've got a new ship. Oh. Ah, we do. What have we got? A scout and a advanced D. Advanced defender. It's all about the D. <laughs> anyway, there's something new I can show you now. See this swirly mess here? Yep. That is a wormhole. We can't travel along wormholes until we got a particular technology. Let's see if we can figure... No, the wrong window. I want research. That's research. No. That's not research. That's what I did it twice now. Wrong bloody window. Um, where is the res? Where, how do we get into wormholes? 
<laughs> it's complicated. Uh, I suppose it's something with maybe exploration. Yes, actually, what's exploration at the bottom? Exploration at... Uh, advanced Magnetics Drive, Colonize Arctic, Falcon, Sustainability, I think it's Embryonic Shielding, Colonize Lava, I can't actually remember how we can do that, Ship Class Phoenix, ooh, very shiny, that's a big ship, and what's this one down here, Condor, where's the one where we can go jumping down into wormholes? Dagnam. Gravitation manipulation. Manip ah, got it. Yeah. Applied Casimir. Applied Casimir effect. If I highlight that one, um, unlock space travels via wormholes. Oh. So if I make shift click on that, that will be our priority after we've got all these other little ones here. Yeah. And when we can could travel in other wormholes, we'll be laughing. So we shall... We'll be laughing. We'll be laughing, oh. totally. Oh. <laughs> okay. And this dude can go... Where should we send him? Send him that way. See how long it takes him to get there. Quite a long time. And turn. See, already, we've, we've faffed about for a bit, but we've got quite a lot done already. Oh, new... Hydromiel has been identified in the galaxy. I think that means we've researched something and now all of a sudden dust water they had all of a sudden all the things that we were on these planets we can now actually see. Xenology. Yeah, I can see two planets now can be something done as well in the Leo star system it seems. Oh yes. Let's move our ships. He's gonna go that way, he's gonna go that way. How long until you're done, friend? Eight turns. We don't want to hurry that one, do we? Because otherwise that's all our money gone. Yeah. Or do we want to hurry it? No. Uh, I think we're fine, actually. Okay, doke. Now what I really want to do is get a few more nest ships on the go. Because all these planets, is that's extra money looking at us. We need this. Well, if you want more colonization, maybe you should buy it then. <laughs> I'm tempted, don't you know? Yeah. We move our ships. What's happened here? We have discovered Aine? Aine? A new exploration ship is created on Aine. Excellent. A new ship. That's our Kaisis done. Colonized. Excellent. That's lots of extra money coming our way. Hmm. What should we build on there? Industrial improvement, was it? I uh, would maybe think about something different because this is such a small planet. Nest ship? How long will that take? 12 turns. Whereas if we go to this one, oh no. That's a queue for the entire system, not just the one planet. Okay, okay, that's new. Ish. Nest chip, do you reckon? Yeah, if you want to pump up some uh, new planets, that might be useful. Okie dokie, we'll do that. I'm learning from the master here, everybody. <laughs> I'm learning! I play this game. <laughs> but you play more of these sort of games than me, sir. Um, apart from it's mostly fantasy. <laughs> this is true. I do play Galaxy 3, though. I mean, 2. Uh, that is quite complex, though. Maybe even more than this. But so far, it's quite complex as well, so I'm not really comparing much between them, though. Yeah, get the hang of it. It's easy enough. There you go. On turn 13 now. Turn in progress and boop. There we go. Move our fleet. See here, all the coloured icons are disappearing as they the AI does its thing. Later on in the game, those will stay lit up and to wait whilst they're watching you. <laughs> right, you've done your thing. Another forty percent research on our empire for the next five turns. I expect that to go boom, boom, boom quite quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who's not got an order? You haven't got an order. That's a nice little dead end planet, actually. System, I should say. Oh, God, look at that. Desert, lava, asteroid. Asteroids are useless, usually. Hmm. Yeah. That one looks handy. Looking at the stats, it's a good research planet. That's a good industrial planet. That's a good... Actually, that's not so bad for money. Nope. That one's not so bad for money, either. In fact, the asteroid was quite 
Good. <laughs> Wasn't bad, was it? All right, we'll send that bad boy down here. There we go. And I think that's the end of the turn. We still haven't uncovered another race yet. Nope. What have we just researched? Isolation shields. That gives us some shiny building we can make. And if we build this one, we get Titanium 70. Ooh, that's a good one to have. Titanium 70 allows production of bigger ships. Oh. Move our fleets. Ooh. Exploration event NIS. And, we, and this one, you can see there's multiple choice now. As familiarity with space travel and exploration increases, more and more events and anomalies are registered. We've got basically got three choices here. Option 1, Option 2, and Option 3. Option 1, one technology is randomly discovered. Option 2, plus 10% research on our empire for 50 turns. Or Option 3, 50% research for 10 turns. I'm tempted to go for Option 2. It's a good long-term investment. Uh, Meaning if... Go on, Yeah, sorry. it looks... Good. Whereas that one, we get a lot of research, but we get it quick. Oh, no, actually, that's good for growing quickly, isn't it? We get 50% extra for 10 turns. Mm. We want to grow quickly. We'll go for that one. And you. Oh, there's one planet we can colonize in there. Where should we send you? We'll send you down to this star here. A proto star. Ooh, very shiny. Next. I really want, before we end this recording, I really want to show you a battle, because they are quite epic. Mm -hmm. Now what's happened? Oh, that's just uh, confirming our event from the previous turn. And our choice, 50% research for the next 10 turns. I'm happy with that. If That will get us towards the wormhole travel a lot quicker as well. Titanium 70. Yes, thank you. Very happy about having Titanium 70. In fact... Very useful, that. Um... Usually these games can take a while to actually get into battle, though. That's why I'm hoping to just be aggressive with the development. I'm not planning on continuing this game. This is just a first impressions for DF video. Yep. And I really, really want you to see a battle, so you can actually... The battles are the crucial part of these games, and this battle does... It, this battle system is a lot different than other games, I find. End in turn in progress. Move the fleet. What's happened? Oh, the Aquarius has built our nest ship. So what should we build next? That'll take us 14 turns. We could build a warrior, which will take three turns, or another scout, which will take three turns. I would say we just pump up with mess ships. Because I don't think we need warrior ships right at the moment, until I've at least have right. met anyone. Did you notice what I just did there, by the way? I clicked on the ship twice, and we made a queue. Yep. I think we can queue up to 10 items. That is all good. I know about right, you doing yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I just thought I'd, I thought I'd make you aware, just in case you wanted this game selling even more. Yes. Now, we, this nest ship is now in the hangar in Aquarius. We have to create that, and that becomes its own little nest ship. Where should we send that to? Further away or closer to home? In fact, no. Where's that really good one? I think it was is it on? maybe on Leo, maybe. No. Nah, it's not that good. Look at the stats. You yeah. only get two food, and but you can get lots of people on these planets. Um, no, we're not going for that. Was it Hamal? Maybe. We can only colonize the Ar Arid, and it's not that good. Leo, we just looked at Nis. Sea Toots. Um. Well. Uh, yeah. It's the best one we've seen so far. Sea uh, where's the other one? Just say we know. Where's Sea Toots? Ah. That, oh, that's not good at all. Oh. <laughs> it's tiny. We'll send it to Nis. End turn. Could do with some combat. We'll go to you. What have we got here? An advanced destroyer and a nest chip. The advanced destroyer can fuck off. We'll send the advanced destroyer down here. We should leave the nest ship to colonize the planet. We want to click on the. We can only. You basically, when you bring up the screen, you click on the planet you want to colonize. Boom, done. Uh -huh. Colonized. We want to 
industrial, wasn't it, to get going? There we go. And then maybe add an S ship to the... No, we haven't got enough colony people. We haven't got enough of a colony here to actually build an S ship. Because you know how it usually works in these games? Every time you make a colony type ship to go populate another planet, it takes one population off your planet. And these only have a maximum of seven anyway. It's all similar to uh, other games. I mean, I'm just going to say that because I'm not going <laughs> to poke out every new other game that we're playing. Uh, we're playing now... Endless space. <laughs> I'm sticking the to it. Big... Ooh, apply cashmere effect. We're going to have that in nine turns. We've still got that research thing, haven't we? But the biggest shame for me is you can't hear the soundtrack. That's the biggest shame for me. I really want you to be able to hear just how soothing this game can be. And then when it picks up for battle. You know, have you ever seen Battlestar Galactica? No. Ah, oh, shame. Ooh, let's have a look at this planet. What's that blue thing in the distance I can't look at? So just a second star. And we have a semi-decent system here. Oh, look at all the research oh. we can get from this helium planet. That's, yeah, not that's bad a good at all. one. Especially on the research front. I'll send you down here. Send you down here. There we go. I find you have to zoom in a little bit just to make sure you actually get the click properly right. It's not very sensitive with uh, how it's with how much you can click on something. Scout, you can go down to there. Left click to select something, right click to choose where it's going. Oh, we haven't looked at that planet. We can oh, see how it's one of these icons has gone purple. That means it's got a resource. Yep. Let's cl let's click on Novarus. Novarus. It's all right. This system. Not anything to shine up. Not anything to shout home about. But this has got titanium seventy. I want that titanium seventy. However, if it managed to colonize every planet there, that would be quite useful. Yes. And turn. Come along, game. You must have patience with four X games. <laughs> patience? What is this patience you speak oh. of? It isn't like F1. <laughs> oh dear. Right, this Arctic planet here doesn't look too bad. Ten research there. This is good for dust. The others are okay. But yeah, he can go onward. Oh, there's a, see there's a star above this one. It means there's going to be something to uncover here. Yep. Oh, I said that already, didn't I? Ah, da. End of turn in progress. See, it just really does zip along. It's that really wonderful in-between stage of a game. And what should we do here? Should we just build up the infrastructure of... Oh, something's just made noise in my ears. I think an event's happened because we went to a planet. Uh, Nest chip will create you. Let's build some system developments. Food? Or dust or... Uh. What's more important? Oh, oh, we want lots of dust. Should we go for the xenotourism? Sure. Don't have to if you don't want to. Um, I'm actually just going to go with whatever you want right now. First contact, okay. though. Ooh. You have encountered the Hisso. Aren't we the Hisso? Oh, that's kind of... So one of the random races is the Hisso. And Nis... Nis isn't building anything. We see how we make improvements to the planets and... Wait, where's, where's the improvements tab? Yeah, colonial base. Things are now being built here and here. Mm -hmm. Let's get some more dust on the go. We could build. We'll, we'll build that, and then once that's done. Oh wait, wait. Where's Nis gone? Nest chip for you. Nis, and then another. And then a nest chip for. Oh, twenty-one turns. But that'll be all right. I think that's twenty-one turns in total. Move all our ships. Who's encountered what? Where is our first encounter? If you can go on a diplomacy window, you might see. No, that's heroes. Haven't played this for a while, can you tell? Ah. There we go. Oh, it's the same race. How rude. Yeah. How we rude. We need to exterminate them. <laughs> <laughs> see that snowflake there? That means relations are frosty between us. Yep. That's quite handy to know. So I'm just wondering, where the hell are they? 
They've come in, seen us, and fucked off again because of the way that it's all the, the turn works all at the same time. It's not we get a go, then an AI takes a go, then an AI takes a go. Everybody takes their goes all at the same time, which is quite cool. Nest ship. We shall send him down to Nevers, I think. It's useful for a let's play, you could say. I mean, the... everyone moving at the same time. Oh, yeah. Scout has got to Aldebaran. It's not Aldebaran, is it? Damn it! Yep. Aldebaran. Off he goes. <laughs> it's again Star Wars. It's what's left of Aldebaran after the Death Star blew it up. Honest. Oh, there we go. There's a Hisso. AI number two. And they're yellow. Right, so that's pretty much the limits of our boundaries so far. If we zoom out a bit... Too much. Yeah, it's looking like a decent sized galaxy so far. What have we got here? The glittering halls. What's that give us? Doesn't tell us. The glistening halls gives us 25% XP bonus for each battle. Battle, battle. Uh, under construction. By the way, Mod. Yes. Uh, this would maybe be a good moment now to uh, maybe rec recruit a hero because I think our money income is. start to do. Bro. Okay. We'll have this guy. Yep. We'll assign him to a fleet. Which one? The one in orbit above Duvel Duyel, I think. There you go. He's got. He, he's the hero is now assigned to this fleet, and let's send him deeper into enemy territory. Yes. I mean, it's good to have someone. Maybe if it's gonna be combat. <laughs> <laughs> though I'm not sure right. how it's going to work here though he can wait there for a bit because we're, we're three turns away from getting our wormhole technology I've just seen the time on this this is going to be quite a decent length episode mm. I, I was considering cutting it but no dismiss you move all out and move ships right you're there what should we do with you we'll move you to here I think and enter. That one ship there is just the little ship hiding over to the right of our screen. Move fleets. Oh, lovely. Can we make you hold there? Order a fleet to remain idle until an enemy is in that fleet's detection range. Automatically explore the galaxy. No. Intercept. We'll have you on an intercept for now. Any, basically, any enemy that comes into this system here, we'll, we're going to nail them. This guy needs to go this way direction. Yep. This way. Come on. I didn't mean to accidentally deselect you. I'm sorry. Oh, he's coming back for us. I want to fight him. I want to show you the fight. A, f a fight. Uh, Othero. Yeah. Don't leave us. Don't leave us. <laughs> Apply a Cas Casimir effect, and then we got nothing in research. Oh, he left us. If we go my research tab, my mouse is playing up at the moment, it seems. Okay, we've gone a decent way into that tab. What should we research next? What do you think? Money related? Combat related? Maybe combat, but then again, this game won't last too long. <laughs> it really doesn't matter, do it? does it? Not overly, no. What's this letters have? Colonize Arctic and sustainability is colonized desert. You and you will do. Move our fleet. Are you going to come and intercept us? Dismiss. Discover the technology required to safely traverse the wormholes at Link Constellations. Which brave captain would discover? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you. Stop defending. Whoosh, straight away over to the other side. Oh, that looks like a semi-decent planet. The system, even. That is a semi-decent system. Check out this research here. And the money on uh, Stadiris the first. Yes, yes. If we can get a nest chip over there before anybody else, I'm happy. Uh, we've discovered something, but it doesn't tell us what it does. Let's end the turn and find out. We're getting dangerously close to the hour mark here, mate. Ooh. Shit. <laughs> That's, this time's just flown by. 
Yeah, these games tend to do that. <laughs> Alright, let's go to Aquarius. Wait, wait. Oh shit, I just accidentally removed it from the queue. It's okay. We're, we need to go to Hangar, Create You. You can go there. Don't need to keep watching you. You can go here. And the nest ship can go. Where do we say we're sending nest ship to? Uh, to the stators. All the way there. That's a hell of a trek. It is, but it's quite useful, maybe, though. Oh, God, yes. But um, I just... I'm also thinking about if we would actually continue on this, we should maybe try and build a ship to protect that area. We should. Oh, ooh, there's a ship in orbit here. In, in Polaris orbit. Oh no, he ran. Pussy shit. They all his pussies. Fine, we'll, we'll go chase him. And he's in. Edgar, he's co he's coming along this road. He can't just stop. T he can't turn around until he lands at this planet. So when we get there, when he gets here now, we will enter combat with him. I think that's how it works. Anyway, that's the Horatio we've discovered now. The clones. Let's send you on that way direction. I suppose. Ending. Um... That would be a good time to end the episode after the combat. Yes, that is one I'm planning on. Oh, what's happened here? You have mapped half of the known galaxy, an achievement as practical as it is impressive. After all, knowledge is the first step to power and control. So if that what we've been covered so far is half of the map. Oh, well, it's decent. I mean... Yeah, could, we could, for a medium-sized map, it's okay, yeah. isn't it? I mean... I believe it exists also extra large maps and stuff like that, <laughs> which mm. would take it forever. <laughs> Especially if there would be uh, plenty with uh, other uh, races. Right, let's get this planet on the go. Let's get you some industrial on the go. What's not moving? You. You can go that way direction. And the turn. Come on, want some combat? Combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha, excellent. Combat. The enemy fleet is waiting for you. Before we start, we have a battle selection screen. We can either have the app battle run in auto mode or manual mode. Clicking on any of those begins the combat. Auto mode, we miss the shiny bit. Yeah. We have various numbers here. This is luckily our advanced defender. That's our stats if we hover above us. That's its stats if we hover above it. I mentioned this is sort of card game based, didn't I? Now, this bar here, by the way, is basically how likely we are to win the combat. We're, we be in the blue and the defenders being the yellow. That's not always the case, that's just basically our colour. If we were facing Horatio that we discovered, that would be green. We have various cards we can play. Ooh. I'm not entirely sure what each one does, but generally we'll go... Defensive card counters offensive cards. That's an offensive card which counters tactics. It's like Paper, Rock, Scissors, Lizardman, mm -hmm. Spock. <laughs> um, we don't want that one. We'll have a Adaptive. Oh, oh, attack six. Oh, that's horrifying as well. Mm, we'll go with that. I don't know whether that's going to going to be any good or not. But we can change cards on the fly if we get the chance. We will get the chance. We will get the chance. We will get the chance. Change the cards on the fly. Now it's time for a shiny loading screen and battle time. Battle in induces system. Hmm. We should be able to change cards. Yeah. We. If I click on at some that one. Yes. The battle doesn't pause though, so we have to change the cards in real time. Ah. Uh -huh. Although they're not really cards, they're more orders, but you can unlock more orders to do more research. Adaptive against weapon overclock. What counters tactics? We need something that counters tactics. Weapon overclock. No, wait, 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 wait. We want something to count as offensive. Magnetic field. That'll do. But you see how we've taken. A bit of health, and he's taking a bit of damage there. That's the green bar on the side. This here is our turn bar. Long range phase, medium range phase, close range phase, and magic. Yes, yes. Yellow start. Ye yellow plus. And that. Am I doing a good job of explaining this? <laughs> it's going fast right now. 
it, it is, I'm trying to keep up. Because that, it, yeah, basically each of these can counter each of these. And the yellow plus means it's super effective. The red X means nope. The green tick means it's yes. But the yellow tick is what... Sorry, the yellow plus is what we're aiming for. And here we are, last phase. The AI tends to go for the same card. So once we figure out what the AI uses, then we can use that all the time. So we can use our magnetic field to counter their overclock. Is it overclock? Yep, okay, I could. Anyway, scout is about to go boom. Boom. One more salvo and boom. Can we see the explosion? Please. We missed the explosion. <laughs> Stupid camera. Ah. But there you go, there's your uh, combat there, sir. I told you it's different. Now imagine that with several ships on each side. It would only be about 10 ships each tops, but it's worthwhile. It's a lot of fun. It really is, I think. Oh, and we can combine fleets as well. Uh, what have we got here anyway? That's a advanced defense destroyer and a scout. Merge into one super fleet. There we go. If we're going to click on that, there's two ships in that fleet ready to go fleeting around and on that note sir are you happy with that yes are you reasonably sold with the idea of getting endless space I now i think i'm going to pick it up yes yay i get a buddy oh battle report annihilated messed up our first turn but it's all good it's all good and apparently we didn't take any damage at all nope. well that was a good run then Thank you very much for watching us for as long as you have if you've managed to stick to the end, guys. I've been Mod, with me alongside in the pilot seat, in the... Over there, that way direction. <laughs> it's been DF. Yes. I'm going to say bye-bye. <laughs> I was going to say, did you want to say anything else, sir, to end us up on? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm quite... I'm quite fathomed, actually. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching if you have stayed with us this far. Dream big. Um... Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you want to see more. We'll see you next time. Hopefully for some more endless space soon. Bye-bye.